Hello and welcome warriors of creativity. The epic battles of Art Fight 2024 have concluded and now it is time to unveil the spoils of war. And the legendary Wormstorm, aka the Art Fright mascot, will be joining us virtually since I couldn't wait till September 30th to have him arrive here in person. I am so excited to have the plushie. I have my diamond plushie badge from ordering off of Makeshift, which is really cool. I think it's cool, but I also am very impatient, so I couldn't wait until it arrived in order to make this video. We are very lucky to have him here today on Zoom. So without further ado. This year, I decided to go old school with markers and inks, even though I am a digital artist and have been for the past decade. So let's go ahead and jump in. Really quickly, the first two pages are test pages because I wanted to test out this idea before I committed to it and sacrificed all of your characters to my experiment. So I have here on the first page my original character Dottie from my webtoon. And here we have my Pokemon trainer and this one actually made it onto the Artfight website as one of my character reference sheets. And yeah, that's basically what I did leading up to Artfight. This was some of my prep work pre-Artfight. And uh, I gotta say like drawing circles, Legit hard, guys, legitimately hard. And behold, my first attack. This masterpiece was created from my hit list, which that, the hit list, was created with you all during my pre-art fight live stream. And when I realized during that stream that there were two celestial beings belonging to my viewers, I could not wait to draw them together. Some things that I definitely learned in this process, well, there were a lot of things I definitely learned in the process of creating this piece. Learning kind of like blending and color matching and all of that, and these, honestly, these swatches are godsend. Love them, so useful, so helpful. Um, I did change one thing, one thing about this after Art Fight, or after I had already posted it to the Art Fight website. I just filled in this little notch here that you probably can't even tell, there's some white out. I had initially sheeted this in, blocked it in with like the black background color. And as soon as I filled that color in, I liked <laughs> that was, mm, uh, it. I love it so much more. And honestly, super, super happy with how my first one came out. Next up, we have a revenge from 2023. My one and my only revenge from a previous year that was owed because in the previous years, I have always managed to revenge every attack that I've ever gotten, except for this one in 2023, because they snuck it in like on August 1st, I think, right before our fight closed. Next up, we have one that's called Sleep Deprivation Dragon, created after my third cup of coffee and a solid couple of hours of procrastination. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, you're right. That's not really what this is called. That's not what I titled this on Art Fight. This is Mango. He is this cute little snake that was in my bookmarks and um, I love the color shifting for this character. Here with the long neck goose, not long neck goose, the lamp neck goose, I um, was really excited about this piece because I felt super proud of how I managed the perspective. There's definitely a um, top down tilt, like we're looking kind of uh, as if this was an isometric character on um, a tabletop game board or something. Next up are the final hit list characters that I was able to squeeze into my first 48 hours on Art Fight this year. And what I basically decided was that in the first 48 hours of Art Fight, I would only do characters that I had added to my hit list from my live, my pre-Art Fight live stream. And so anybody that had shown up to my live stream submitted their Art Fight profiles for me to choose characters from. They made it on that hit list and those were the characters I was drawing for the first 40 hours so that I wouldn't be distracted by attacks that I would then be focused on revenging. I could just focus on those bookmarks. I really liked that 
process. I recommend that process for anybody else who's also struggling to get to their bookmarks during Art Fight. I really want to, each year, practice different types of characters, a diverse group of characters. I would like to draw animals. I want to draw people. I want to draw mechs. I want to draw fan OCs. Um, I want to draw monster OCs, and that helps me become a better artist. And like many other artists will tell you when you're doing these sketchbook tours, anytime I use a color, I try to carry it over to somewhere else on the page. And so with this orange highlighter color, I carried that over. I almost made like a sticky note back here, but it's really not a sticky note. It's just um, a vibrant orange block behind our uh, Mac OC. We're gonna jump ahead real quick to this drawing because I was just talking about how I like to diversify my character drawings and part of that diversity, it's drawing what classifies as monster art, even if your monster is not scary. It's not an anthro, it's not an animal, but it's also not a person either. And so this is gonna be kind of your Frankenstein character. So the character belongs to Bingo Ned and then the drawing I made for them as a revenge art. And this one was a moth creature lady, but she is fully human sized. She's not small. The wings are were such a challenge, but one that I found a beautiful reference for. And then of course I'm referencing the character art on Art Fight, and I definitely recommend doing both. The creator's character references and having your own references pulled for poses or for props, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole gamut. <laughs> a character named Scarlet. Super fun, by the way. I had way more fun drawing this page than I thought I was gonna have, and so I was pleasantly surprised in all the best ways. And this is a fan OC because it is a fan insert character, you know, like head cannon into the movie's John Wick. And so here we have just a little doodle here of her and John Wick peeking around a corner, you know, probably sussing out the baddies. Here she is. <laughs> with her pew pew and again with a little bit more of the character showing so I got like a three quarters view here of the character so we can see more of the wardrobe we can see that she's got like these uh, packs on her she's got her leg holster for her weapon and then I gave her a nine millimeter because that's just the weapon that I'm probably most familiar with really happy with this page again and it's always fun to draw fan OCs last year I drew spider-verse uh, fan made OCs and this year I drew a John Wick fan made OC Along with trying to draw diverse characters, like I said, animals, persons, mags, fantasies, etc., I also kind of flirted a little bit with realism when it came to this dog portrait, but I was really happy with how it came out, especially because the reference was extremely simplified and, and very much a cartoony style of dog. And, and so this is kind of how that turned out. And um, the comments from the creator were super positive, which is good. You always want to be very sensitive and careful with how you approach other people's characters and you always want to represent them in a way that they would appreciate. This would be another example of flirting with ideas that I don't have a lot of experience in, and that is drawing with negative space. I saw this mushroom character in a profile for a creator who I needed to draw revenge for. I wanted to draw using negative space as soon as I saw this white, like ghost white hair of hers. And so I drew her kind of just standing casually in the woods. I expected these originally to be like also super negative spaced, but um, between the hair overlapping it and also having so much of the ground uncolored and undetailed because it's also negative space, I came back in with a very light uh -oh marker and sort of just detailed in a little bit of contouring just to give us a little bit more um, context with this drawing. I think there's a lot more I could still learn when it comes to drawing with negative space, but I am happy with this attempt. Now we have moved into some art fight mistakes. I mean, memories, some art fight memories. Here is what I would like to call the great ink spill disaster. 
Okay, yes, yes, maybe I'm being a little dramatic again, but the truth is I decided at the very last minute to add an outline around these characters because I felt like they were not popping off of some of the background iconography. And this is a lesson learned, you guys. Part of doing art is learning from mistakes. Not everything is gonna come out picture perfect. And I was gonna go all the way around and you kind of see here and here if you look closely and on this edge as well that there was briefly an outline here and I couldn't quite get rid of it where it went over, you know, overlapped the purple triangle. It was just muddying the character more than it was helping it pop. And so I decided instead of fully outlining the character with a thicker line, I would just turn it into more of a drop shadow. Um, and you can kind of see that choice executed here on this side with our elf character. I submitted the attack prior to my questionable decision here to add the outline at all. So I'm still happy with the, the original that I submitted. Let me know if you've had your own version of the ink spill disaster during your art journey and how you dealt with that. And we will talk about creative solutions on some of these other pages. This page, is also one of my art fight lessons learned. And I do super love this page, don't get me wrong. I had a lot of fun drawing these animal characters. Um, both of these are cats. This one is like Bat Cat instead of Batman. Can you see that? Like the little bat iconography on the, the suit here. That said, up here, I tried to correct that mistake with some uh, white out or some white Posca pens, but the white Posca, the paint is actually kind of thick and can come out kind of gloopy. And so when it all comes out at once and then you end up with this, this kind of like super wet page, even after letting it dry and trying to color over it, I still ended up with a page that looks wet and the color matching isn't quite fully matched to the rest of the color around that. Uh, with this character, I definitely had to step outside of my comfort zone because this is very much like a very Kali anime inspired sort of nine tail squirrel type character. Super cute, uh, but I am not like a huge consumer of anime content. And so drawing something like this definitely helped push me in a direction that I'm not used to going. And I'm still very happy with the results. And we're gonna look at some of these out of order. We will still look at every single page and we're gonna cover every single attack that I drew. I forgot to put the clear plastic sheet and by that I mean this, there's like a clear plastic sheet. But without this, these pages tend to bleed. And what happened is this drawing here bled over onto this page. And I had kind of a decision to make whether I was gonna skip this page or if I was going to find a solution. And the solution that I came up with was to create this sort of like mini mass attack with these chibis. And so I attacked four separate creators who I owed revenge to who said in their description that they did not mean mind being drawn with other characters or who at the very least did not have a rule in their description saying, do not draw my character with other people's characters, please. I chose to draw them around kind of where the bleed marks were. And then for the bleed marks, I was able to conceal those by coloring in the whole background with a sort of gradated blue. And then I like made the edges super messy because I kind of wanted it to look kind of like a, like a doodle, a doodle page that you would do um, on your homework or something. And so then I went over it with all of these cute little doodles using a gel pen. Another issue that I was constantly running into was centering my drawings on the page. When you're drawing on a digital canvas, you can expand the canvas, you can crop the canvas, you can lasso tone select your drawing and move it, you can scale it to be bigger, you can scale it to be smaller. So anytime you draw something and the proportions are not quite right or the composition is not quite right, you have the option to move things around. But with a pad of paper, <laughs> those options are all, all of them straight out the window. 
I really liked my drawing here of these two characters inside this frame, but what I did not like was the fact that it was so off center. We had about three fingers width on this side of the page, but then if you come over here, it's literally five fingers width to get to the, the, the spine of the book. And so what I did, rather than erase the whole drawing, and move it over and try to recreate the whole thing. I just added this sort of text art that um, I felt was also super fitting to the characters. And just to wrap up this section, we are going to flip over here to look at this art attack that was extremely difficult in the best way. This was not an easy one to kind of find references for. And so it was a lot of trial and error with the pencil work and a lot of trust the process. And then at the very end, once I was happy with the drawing, I was happy with the colors, with the markers, I came back in and I kind of wanted to give her something to be looking up at. So I went through my stickers and grabbed these three butterfly stickers. And I kind of love that these are so reflective. And then with a gold uh, paint pen, I came in and just kind of hand drew on a couple of these smaller butterflies. And for all the heartache that went into trying to draw this piece, I am so relieved that in the end, it came out as a piece of art that I am proud of and that I do enjoy and I do like. One thing that I did with my mass attacks for this book is try to fit multiple characters on a page. I really wanted to fully utilize the whole page and not leave the page of the book looking unfinished. And so there are many pages in this book that are technically mass attacks, including this one. And so for this, I did four quadrants, four characters, three <laughs> creators. This person that I was revenging had actually gone what I felt was above and beyond on their attack for me. They put in so much effort. They included so many additional props and details. If I'm gonna do these cutesy, simplified character sketches, I really wanted to at least give them two of them to sort of make up for the fact that they had put in so much time and effort into the attack they had drawn for me. Another example of this is this drawing here. Because I wanted folks to feel like they could isolate their character and, and like crop it and just have their character if they wanted to, I went with this bookmark method. I thought it was a pretty clever idea. And with this one, it got a little extra detailing up here. It was not because of favoritism. It's because there was this spider web detail in the original reference sheet kind of drawn into the earlobes of the character and I just could not get that level of detail at this size. So when I'm drawing a full body, the details can kind of get really tiny. Another mass attack, technically speaking, we'll call them mini mass attacks, but this is technically a mass attack. We have here two wizards, both revenges, owned by two separate character creators. And I was going through all of my like owed revenges. I noticed that two of them had wizards and it would be really fun to kind of like draw them canonically together. I checked the permissions page for each and made sure that they would be okay with this kind of a drawing to be included with someone else's character, which both of them were. And this is also one that I did live on stream. So if you're interested, that's definitely still there. With this one, you can tell it's kind of further back in the book. I had done the, the whole outlining thing a couple of times. I wanted to go a little bit harder on this one. So I tried to do like a full scene with a full background. It's literally just a straight horizon line with some grass and like this little dirt road. <laughs> but I know that like the main focus is here anyway. And so we have the three lady characters. It was three revenges in one. Um, I got to draw this beautiful scene. I got to do this fun like perspective. I did get this idea of Pinterest. This is not my own, this didn't come out of my noodle. Okay, I got this idea of Pinterest, but I did fully hand draw this. There was like no tracing or anything like that. If we flip back a couple of pages, we're gonna see one other mass attack here. Technically speaking, I understand it's two characters, but this also transitions us into the next segment, which is my personal favorites from Art Fight this year in the sketchbook tour. And I had so much fun drawing the scene. I honestly surprised myself. I was not sure about drawing and like a tank side view of an underwater, above water seascape. 
let alone doing it with traditional medias. I think you can probably tell that I put some white out up here on these clouds because I did try to like gray out the underbellies, um, but I used way too dark of a gray. I should have used this color. And so I just whited that out and kept it nice and simple. Another water-based character that I drew this year for Art Fight was this one. And I honestly lost my mind when I looked up the reference for what this type of animal is called, the lower half anyway, and I'll show you up on screen. I did not realize just how cute these little creatures were. And then they have like the little ears that are a little bit see-through here. They're winged at the tip. And so I made sure to get that little detail because it was also noted on the character reference sheet that that was a little detail that she wanted to draw attention to. This is a cowrie shell being worn as a top, which I thought was really fun and innovative because we don't see a lot of cowrie shells used as adornment for um, our you know, our mer people or mer folk types. She turned out a lot smaller on the page than I initially intended. And so I had to figure out a way to sort of like fill in the space and make the piece feel complete. And so I created this paneling and then I had her breaking out of the panel here. And I created this um, duality of uh, sand and surf. And the reason why I did this is because the character has much like Ariel from Little Mermaid, sort of an obsession with the land dwellers and so I wanted to show that duality here in the background. Doing the shine here and the blending with the two colors on these markers was super satisfying. I had a lot of fun with that and I was really comfortable laying down these colors because of another favorite that I had drawn just before that page and that was this page and those were the same colors I used on these bubbles here that are just kind of like dotting the uh, background and creating a little bit of a wallpaper for these characters. This is not a mass attack. It is not. This is a single revenge for one creator. They had a four Tamagotchi OCs and I loved them so much. They're so cute. This is an Insta fave for me. I even used it as a thumbnail for one of my live streams. It made me almost, almost turn my Tamagotchis back on. But those little critters are needy and they beep all the time and they always want something and then they die. <laughs> and so I resisted the urge because I knew that despite the cute factor, uh, they were gonna be a lot of work. My next favorite that I wanted to discuss was this baseball character like three quarters, almost like a full body. I could have almost submitted this as a full body, but we don't quite see the feet. Um, I submitted it as a half body instead. I kind of wish they had the three quarters option because I draw a lot more three quarters than I realized. And all of them, including this one, got submitted as half bodies. But I had bookmarked this character to begin with on that pre art fight live stream where I made a hit list. And then the creator also went as far as to draw me an attack first. And so this is my opportunity to come back to my bookmarks, my hit list, and revenge some characters that I really wanted to draw in the first place. And I really liked this one. This character is very much like an Adventure Time style character. There's a whole lore there. And then for the, for the background to just sort of like frame her in i added this stitching as if the white page itself was a baseball my next favorite i wanted to talk about were these three little dudes because they are so cute this wasn't even that difficult of a drawing to make much like with the tamagotchis it was a friend group i just couldn't bring myself to split up the party, okay? I couldn't. It just, they had to be drawn together. It was all or nothing for me. And so here we are. This is, this is what's up. <laughs> no, I don't always do that. <laughs> My dear Wormston, although I do, do very, very much love drawing D&D characters. They tend to have a lot more detail in them. And so I'm not gonna draw an entire party piece for you on Art Fight unless I have some really big incentive to do that but for something cute like this and the tamagotchis um where it feels manageable without taking too much time away from spreading the love like getting more attacks out for others uh then i'll then i'll do something like this why don't you guys tell me down in the comments give me examples of some of your favorite moments from art fight made it this far into the video, I want to express my gratitude by sharing a little secret with you. A bunch of us Art Fight YouTubers banded together for a special Art Fight mission called Bounties. And before I tease 
my two small contributions. Keep an eye out on my comment section for this video. Yes, the one you're on right now, because I will be pinning the collab video link to the top of my comment section once it's out. This character is one of two bounties that I have contributed to said collaboration, and this would be the second of those two. This creator for this character gave me so much flexibility on how to color this character. They had multiple color palettes for how they had tried tested out colors for the character. They gave us permission in the description to change colors for this character. And so I really wanted to try kind of creating this glow rather than having the underside be a darker color and shaded. I wanted to give the underside sort of like the appearance of a glowing material. And so even the inside of this pouch that's on his hip is also got this glow to it while the outside is way more of like a dark velvety color. I like that they have this bird-like creature, but it is a wingless, flightless bird-like creature. And so he wears this cape that is kind of like gives the illusion of heather having feathered wings because it's like a feathered cloak. Loved the concept, had to draw it. And so here we are with bounty number two and my last two attacks of Art Fight were these two that I'm gonna show you right now. This and this, this and this, but we're gonna look at this one first and then this, but this one first and then this. I drew both of these on live stream with you guys as we absolutely were sweating bullets on the time quickly disappearing that morning. It was a lot of fun. I definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested in um, just a little bit of casual replay of VOD stream. Yeah, so that's there. Um, but essentially this character is initially an eight foot tall warlock who was cursed and brought down to a mere six, sorry, a mere three feet tall. Um, I really liked the story. I love stories and art and art based on stories. You guys, I'm a sucker for it. So I of course chose this character to draw and I was super duper happy with the way she turned out. My final revenge for Art Fight 2024 was this character. And what makes this character so cute is she is a Stardew Valley fan made OC. So I decided to draw her fishing because that is just one of the many things you can do in the Stardew Valley game. I submitted her with the fishing rod and the blue outline as an attack, but then I came back after our fight was complete to then kind of finish the page because I don't like leaving the pages feeling unfinished and added this fun little um, hand-drawn wallpaper with all these unique and individual fish and these bubbles. And honestly, I gotta say, I love it. I feel like I was able to finish strong. What about you guys? Do you feel like you finished strong or did maybe IRL, real life, got in the way and you're gonna try to make up for that next year? Let me know your experiences on Art Fight because it is definitely an experience for sure. If you're having trouble finding the energy or brain power to draw after such a massive endeavor, might I suggest you try out this video that I have already set up for you. It is perfect for post art fight. <laughs> and Wormston says, it's been a pleasure. Stay tuned for more art adventures and maybe another ink spiller too. Keep those creative swords sharp and I will see you next time. <laughs>